Hello, friends. I'm very glad you're here. Hello, friends. Today, we'll be studying the most important part of the entire Aztec world. The literal center of the universe. The sacred precinct of Mexico, Tenochtitlan. Now, nearly everything you need to know about the Aztecs can be found within this sacred space located in the center of its majestic city, Tenochtitlan. There's about 78 structures, although all of them haven't been found yet, but these buildings can teach you nearly everything about the Kulua Mexica. You can learn about Aztec religion, social structure, architecture, engineering, sports, and their cleanliness. And the Aztecs are incredibly clean people, not like other people, which I won't mention. And you can learn about their amazing, amazing visual, visual culture as well. And you and can learn much, much more. So in the next 15 minutes or so, you're going to be extremely knowledgeable about the Aztec sacred precinct. Yay! Congratulations! So, first lesson? The entire precinct was surrounded by a wall. The, and wall, the wall was, was in the shape, shape of, of a snake. snake or decorated with snakes. And it completely surrounded the sacred precinct. Now, let's look at the center of the universe. The most important building in the sacred precinct. The Templo Mayor. Now the first stone used for the Templo Mayor was placed on the exact spot where, according to David Carrasco, the eagle was found perched on the cactus that marked the end of the Mexica's 200 year journey and that's where they built the Templo Mayor and their city. Now this main temple is a recreation of Coatepec or a mountain called Snake Mountain with the Ocali as another Nahuatl name that's appropriate. This pyramid is a setting for the birth of Huitzilopochtli from his mother, Hualicue, when she feared her daughter, Coyosholque, and her 400 brothers and sisters who plotted to kill their mother. This recreated mountain is a stage for many rituals, including ceremonial human offerings that retells the story of Huitzilopochtli defeating his sister, Coyosholque, who lays dead at the bottom of the pyramid in a stone effigy. And you can see, there she is laying at the bottom. And that's how serious the Aztecs are about this narrative. They recreate the mountain to retell this important story. Now the temple on the left was for Tlaloc, the demigod of rain and fertility. The right temple was for Huitzilopochtli, the patron god of the war and tribute. But the pyramid was rebuilt a total of seven times, one on top of each other, kind of like Russian dolls. And the final version had four levels, and you can see those four levels on the side, one, two, three, four, which was on top of an 84 meter wide platform base. The Templo Mayor is about 45 meters high with about 114 steps. And you can see the snakes throughout the pyramid, which are significant in the Aztec world. They're metaphors for rebirth. But the Aztecs were master engineers, and the precinct is perfectly aligned with the sun. So much so that during the equinox, the sun rays shine exactly between the Tlaloc Temple and the Huitzilopochtli Temple on top of the Templo Mayor. Now directly in front of the Templo Mayor is where the 12-ton monolith of Tlalacutli was rediscovered in 2006. Now Tlalacutli is the Earth Lord, a destroyer and creator, and a god that could be male or female. And underneath the stone, Mexican archaeologists found many offerings, including the saw of a sawfish. And juxtaposed to other great artifacts that were found within the sacred precinct, you get a hint of how enormous the stone is, just how gorgeous and beautiful it, it is. 
Now to the left of the main temple are the priest quarters. Where Mashika priests congregated and prepared for religious duties. Now because religion is integral to the Aztecs, priests are extremely important and in the upper echelons of Aztec society. The important temple of the Eagle Warriors is found in the northeast section of the precinct. Eagle Warriors along with Jaguar Warriors were the elite echelons of the Mexica military. And Aztec warriors rose in rank by displaying bravery, such as capturing warriors in battle. The next building is my favorite, the gorgeous Kanbaquec, the main school of Tenochtitlan, the elite school. Now education was free and compulsory for boys and for girls. And at the Kanbaquec, students were instructed on many useful lessons, including military, mechanical, astrological, and religious training. Youths were also taught history, ge geography, mythology, Aztec law, and the arts, including song and dance, which was crucially important. And the school was adorned with these gorgeous figures called almenas, which represent a cross section of a seashell. Now the cut shell was one of the symbols of Quetzalcoatl, the patron god of knowledge and learning, according to a uh, 2019 book entitled Aztecs, edited by Ancarella et al. These things are gorgeous. The Calmequec is the elite school of Tenochtitlan. It's incredibly clean and gorgeous. In fact, the Aztecs used 1,000 men every day to sweep and clean the city. They are amazingly clean people. Now in front and in line with the main temple was the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl. Now because Ekal Quetzalcoatl is the god of wind, the base of the building is round, which allows the wind to travel around unrestricted. It's absolutely gorgeous. Amazing architecture. But one of the greatest recent discoveries is the Way Sompatli, or the famous Skull Rack, or really Skull Tower, which was rediscovered in 2015 by a Mexican archaeologist. And here is an Aztec stucco display of fake skulls. Sometimes they had real skulls in back of these. And these were used as a base in the sacred precinct and outside of the sacred precinct as well. Now the way Sumpanli is probably where the heads of some of their human offerings on the Temple Mayor ended up. You know, these heads just kind of stuck around. <laughs> and although the Mexican National Institute of Anthropology and History need to do more digging, only about 180 complete skulls have been uncovered. Again, other Sumpalis were erected near the precinct, but it's not the massive skull tower like the Way Sompanli. And the proximity to the Templo Mayor underscores the importance of human offerings to the Mexica. If it's found in the main plaza of the precinct, then it is incredibly important. Here's a closer look and a side view of the Way Sompanli. And in back of the Way Sopali is home to the oldest team sport in the world. Now this ball court is used for the ultra popular mass American game called Ulama, sometimes referred to as Olama or Pocatok in Mayan. Now the ball was harvested from natural latex found locally and because the ball, because the rubber is extremely malleable, you can make it firm but the ball was still able to be able to bounce a, a whole lot. The ball can weigh up to 12 pounds, but the average is probably closer to about four. While the rules are not entirely understood, 
players bounce the ball with their upper legs, their hips, and their torso. So it's like soccer, but you can't use your feet. And one of the objects will just score points by getting the ball through the hoop. So it's kind of like basketball, but you can't use your hands. Ulama was played for thousands of years in Mesoamerica, and nearly every major metropolitan area had these type of courts, especially in their centralized downtown areas like the sacred precinct. Now what's common is the classic I-shaped court. In this type of I-shaped ball court you can find throughout Mesoamerica. This was the game to play. And they were used from the Omics to the Aztecs. And here are a few examples of the hoop also found from the Omics to the Aztecs of Tenochtitlan. Now these hoops are gorgeous, they're beautiful, and they're an important part of the game. Stay native, get your hoop on. But Ulama is more than just a game. There are deep religious significance. The ball moving through the court is a metaphor for the holy celestial movement, the movement of the galaxies, the movement of the stars, which were tracked by Mesoamericans, and the movement of Venus, and the movement of the heavens. This is more than just a game. And those movements were found with the Mexica and their sacred precinct. So much so that 16,000 balls were sent to the Mexica every year from Tochtepec, according to the Codex Mendoza. Now to the right of the ball court is a small garden with ste steps in the shape of a pyramid, then a small pyramid closer to the wall. And this brings us to the pyramid of Donatiu. Donatiu is one of several sun deities in their pantheon. And although Donatiu has been widely accepted as a center of the sunstone, Donatiu is never represented with a frontal face, ever, according to the book, The Aztec Calendar, edited by Vilela and Mary Miller. In any event, Donatiu is an important in the celestial pantheon and found in the sacred precinct. And here's a closer look at the pyramid and its gorgeous designs. And just in back of Tonotigo's pyramid is the pyramid and temple of Tezcalapoca. And as we're nearly at the end of this brief lecture, you can see that the sacred precinct has at least three temples for the four brothers, or the four sons from Omateo, the Aztec deity of duality, extremely important god. So within the sacred precinct, you have temples and pyramids to Tezcalapoca, Quetzalcoatl, and Huichliapochli, who are also three of the four cardinal points. And here's a closer look at the Tezcalapoca pyramid and temple. And although it's just slightly outside of the sacred precinct, the zoo and the gardens are some of my favorite structures as well. Moctezuma Zoo has been well documented and was adorned with countless animals such as deer, fowls, dogs, monkeys, sloths, armadillos, ocelots, lizards. The Mexica Zoo also had turkeys, flamingos, fowls, turtles, and much, much more. There's snakes, wolves, and mountain lions. And among the most impressive would probably the jaguar. The jaguar is a very sacred animal. And they're also excellent swimmers. And the zoo had a variety of birds as well. Now remember, to the Aztecs, feathers were probably the most revered resource, much more than silver or gold. And one of the greatest features of the zoo was probably the aviary where birds could fly in a more natural setting 
I wasn't there at the time, but it must have been absolutely incredible. And then one more building before we make full circle of the precinct and back to the Templo Mayor, the most important building in the Aztec world. So we'll end where we started, examining the labels of the Immaculate Sacred Precinct. And if you wanted to break it down just one more time, then we get a final look at the Mexica. So what's important to the Mexica? And the answer is simple, just by looking at the sacred precinct. The Aztecs treasure their children. They love the free public education, military service, fervent devotion to their gods, including multiple layers of gifts, including flora and fauna, and even human gifts. Ancient Mexicans are the greatest gift givers in history. They also believe passionately in service to the state. They love history. They love studying their past. They love sports specifically group sports, they have gardens, animals. They adored a clean and beautiful city with amazing architecture, and they strongly believe in service to each other. Now at the final slide, we can look at the sacred precinct and what it looks like today, and where many of the great pieces of Mexica art artifacts and architecture were found. Thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And please have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. Peace to you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.